I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Folks, I often set out to do some awesome project, and sometimes it takes me a while to get around to finishing it. And today is a great example of that. You see, I started a series, <laughs> a series of reviews of all the drone racing simulators out there. It's always oh, so, so cool. I'll play some simulator, and I'll review them, and I'll just bang them out. And the first one I did was in January of 2018, over a year ago. And this one that I'm going to do today is the, the second one. So it's going to take me a while to finish. But today we're going to be looking at the DRL simulator. And frankly, I'm glad I waited because DRL is coming out with a new update which makes the physics better than ever before. In fact, they've done something that, as far as I know, no other simulator has done. They have compared real-world flight to their simulated flight and tried to make it match up. And that's pretty cool. So let's take a look at what has always made DRL unique and fun to play and what's new about the new update of DRL that makes it fly better than ever before. That's what we'll find out. Stay tuned. Welcome to the 2019 Swatch DRL Tryout. Tonight, we crown the 2019 Sim Champion, who earns a $75,000 contract to race as a Swatch pilot in the upcoming DRL season. Before we get to the merits of DRL Simulator as a computer program, or a game, or a simulator, however you want to call it, we got to talk about something that makes the DRL Sim unique. Well, almost unique. And that is its ties to real-world drone racing and television. So DRL, the Drone Racing League, is it actually started. This didn't start as a simulator. It started as a television show, a drone racing league on ESPN, ESPN2. Okay. In the Drone Racing League television show, pilots compete in just awesome environments, stadiums, shopping malls, lights. It's just such a production like you've never seen before. And I've always felt really positive about DRL. There are some drone racing purists who prefer more pilot-focused events than spectator-focused events. And I think that's where the split between something like Multi-GP and something like DRL comes in. Multi-GP is very pilot-focused, but it is very difficult for anyone who isn't involved in drone racing to even understand what's going on. You take something like DRL and the quads that they're flying are heavy and underpowered by the standards of like a multi-GP racer, but they are carrying high definition cameras and they're creating this footage that can then be edited. DRL races are not broadcast live. They're put on television after they're edited together into something that people can understand and enjoy. I was in a pizza joint on a business trip and ESPN was on television and Drone Racing League was just on TV and random people in the bar were watching drone racing and that was the moment where I said, okay, DRL, whatever you're doing is a good thing. You know, even if there are some aspects of it that maybe as pure drone racing pilots, we might object to. But DRL is more than just a television show. The Drone Racing League simulator ties into that with the goal of making real world drone racing accessible to people who might be just computer gaming nerds. So DRL runs tryouts within the simulator where the pilot who wins the tryouts can actually get a spot on the television show and prove whether the simulator, his skills in the simulator will translate to skills in the real world. As you would expect coming from a drone racing league, DRL is very race focused. And if we go to the solar race here, we can see that you can race any of the DRL maps. You can literally race the actual maps that you see or saw on television, which is pretty freaking cool. They also have multi-GP tracks where they've got simulated versions of the multi-GP championship tracks and regional finals going all the way back 2015, 16, 17, 18. Although multi-GP is largely race focused, they haven't forgotten about the freestyle pilots. And if we hit the freestyle section, we can pick, well, you can freestyle any of the race maps um, and some of them are okay for freestyle, but the ones that are the most fun are the Gates of Hell and the Out of Service. Out of Service especially is a enormous map, really just so much stuff to find and explore there. 
uh, this giant map where you can fly in the this aircraft boneyard. It actually exists in the real world, although I don't think in the real world that there is a derelict blimp floating uh, overhead. But there's airplanes to fly in and out of, fly through gaps in airplane cowlings. There's a, a terminal, an airport, air, airport terminal that has all these details, a courtyard you can fly down into. There's an aircraft hangar. Just a really, really fun map with a lot of elements to, to fly. And unlike the real world, you don't have to worry about running out of video or running out of battery. You can just fly it to your heart's content. The Drone Racing League Simulator does have a multiplayer mode where you can create multiplayer rooms. You can race against other pilots uh, with, with various conditions that you set. I'm not able to show you that right now because I'm actually running the beta release, the alpha, beta, whatever, pre-release uh, with the updated physics and there aren't anybody else out there flying it. So I can't show you the multiplayer. The feature of the DRL simulator that actually over a year ago made me want to review it though was the solo race. And what's really great about this is, here, let's just pick a map. Uh, yeah, that's good. You can actually pick the ghost laps that you want to see on track with you. So what I mean it here, let's say like that. Okay. So you can say, I want my opponent to be the five people in the leaderboard who are closest to me. And that I find that to be so fun to to challenge yourself against the people who are just a little bit faster than you. So I mean if you go up against the number one in the leaderboard, he's gonna finish before you finish the first lap and then that just what that's not fun. So just take the five people who are a little bit faster than me and let me work on getting better than them and inch my way up that ladder and find those points where uh, where you can improve your times, find those points where they're gaining on you or the point where they made a mistake and you can try not to make that same mistake. This is, this is the most fun I've ever had on a simulator and that goes for any simulator out there, Velostrone, Liftoff, you name it purest racing against real people in the real world sorry that's just not my thing and i think that's why racers purest racers really love velocidrone so much uh, but for me just the ability to go against the leaderboard no pressure no real people in a lobby to see how bad i am <laughs> i can just race their ghost laps and i could get better and better and put up better times work my way up the leaderboard at my own pace Love it. One of the great things about a simulator is that it makes it so easy for beginners to pick up flying and get competent at flying without having to crash and break things and pick up a quadcopter and so forth. So a simulator isn't much good if it's not easy for beginners to pick it up and get into it. And DRL is really easy to set up. Um, if we look here at the controller setup wizard, it's, well, mine's already set up, but I'll run it again so you can see. If I just hit auto calibration, I center the sticks, I say calibrate. All right, it's quick and simple. And you've seen this before, but some may do it better than others. All right, throttle up. Great. Y'all right, got it. Pitch forward, got it. Roll right, got it. There we go, and we're, we're done. And we can also set up the race restart switch if we want to. So there's a race restart and there's a drone reset. Just basically flips your drone over as opposed to restarting the whole race. Controller sensitivity uses Betaflight uh, calculation. It's the same rates as Betaflight 3. I think it's 3.2. Not, not much has changed though. So if you take and you put in your Betaflight RC rates, Oh yeah, 322, there it is right there. If you put it in your Betaflight RC rate, super rate, and expo, you will end up with exactly the same rate curve that you're used to. And this is a big deal because even though the physics in these simulators are not perfect, if you set the rates of the quad to be the same as the rates of your real quad, that actually will translate pretty well. Rates are fairly easy to simulate accurately, whereas uh, physics are a little bit harder. As long as we're talking about physics, let's talk about what... DRL has done to try to make the physics in this simulator the best they've ever been. I am Marilyn Smith. I am a professor in the Daniel Guggenheim School of Aerospace Engineering, and I am also the director of the Vertical Lift Research Center of Excellence. I do research in unsteady aerodynamics, aerodynamics, and aeroelasticity, specifically the nonlinear interaction between fluids and structures. And one of the things you'll see here is the drag mode. I can set that to either traditional drag or GA tech drag.
GA Tech Drag refers to some research done by Georgia Tech, actually my alma mater, maybe you didn't know that, uh, <laughs> done by Georgia Tech researchers about non-steady drag. You see, drag is one of the things that is so hard for a simulator to get right. Uh, drag is just hard to simulate, but it's especially hard to simulate in a very dynamic environment like a quadcopter where the quadcopter is changing position, the props have prop wash that's creating drag. It's just, it's all very complicated. And most, if not all other simulators use basically just some fudge factors where they try and get the quad to feel right without actually emulating any of that. The DRL simulators are actually building in this unsteady drag model into their physics model to try and get that as accurate as possible. And in order to validate that their simulator is as accurate as possible, they've actually taken drones into a, a motion capture studio basically and they perform maneuvers with the drone. So they take the transmitter and they actually do like a flip or a spin. And then they put those same movements into the simulator and see how close the simulator is to the actual movements that they measured. And so when I talk to the guys from DRL and, and they, they say, you know, people come to us and they say, well, this doesn't feel like the real thing to which we can just point to and we go, no, see, it exactly matches what the quad actually does doesn't feel real to you, that's not going to be very convincing, but it does show their focus is on getting the drone in the simulator to respond as if it was in the real world without any kind of fudge factors or anything like that, just to actually get it to do what it ought to do. And that goes not just to the physics model, the drag model, but also to the characterization of the motors and props. So for each motor and prop that they've got in the simulator, they've put that onto a test stand and measured things like the, 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 the speed at which the motor changes RPM, the speed at which the prop changes, the drag of the prop when it slows down, and they've measured all of these things. And it's one of the reasons why there aren't more motors and props in the simulator, because in order for them to get the motor and prop into the simulator, they've got to run all this testing on it, and that takes time. But it does mean that the motors and props that they've got should feel very, very accurate. In addition to the physics editor, you can just edit drones to build your own drone. So if we look here at the workbench, you can create a new drone. So one of the limitations of the DRL simulator, at least as of today, is that there's not a ton of different quads and different parts that you can play with. Hopefully those will be coming soon as they get validated, but at least as of now, you're basically going to fly one of the quads that they give you. You can tweak it though. For example, I created a freestylish version of the Flaco by uh, number one, putting it down on 4S. Yes, the default Flaco is 2400 kV on 5S, hence showing its racing heritage. But I just took here and I uh, changed it out to a 4S 1550. And then I just went into the physics editor and I increased the weight to 640 grams to simulate having a GoPro. And it's not the exact same like frontal area as a chameleon, so the drag isn't exactly right, but it got pretty close. Earlier in the review, I said that beginners should use a simulator to learn to fly, and the DRL simulator has a training mode that is focused on exactly that. If you tried Liftoff's training mode, then I think you're going to be really impressed with the DRL simulator training mode. It is a much more engaged and active training program than just putting you in an environment and saying, fly around these gates. Here's a video of how to do it. So you can see here, the first thing they're going to ask me to do is to hover using my throttle. And they've actually locked out the other sticks. I'm moving the pitch and roll stick now and nothing's happening. You can see it's just giving me control of the one thing that I need. So I can't really screw this up. And it's got this nice little gauge on the side of the screen where I have to control my altitude and hover at a given height. Now it's going to give me the pitch stick as well and tell me to pop the balloon. But I have now do not have throttle control anymore, right? So I'm now moving the throttle up and down and nothing's happening. So it gives you just a little bit more of a structured training program as opposed to kind of like just an environment where they tell you, hey, do this thing. Hope you get it right. Keep trying until you get it. But don't think that this training mode is just for total noobs. Remember that the goal of the DRL simulator is to get people flying and get people racing and, well, eventually get one person into the $75,000 contract and racing on TV in the DRL simulator. That's the promise. So we can see that these get more and more 
uh, complicated and challenging. And we've even got star ratings, which show how well you've done. So you get a one star and just barely pass it. But there's always that incentive to go back and five star all of them if you're a completionist like me. 36 seconds. How many? 37 out of 41. Oh, no. I'm going to fail again. 40 out of 41. Get that boat. Get in there. Get in the... Yes! Oh, wow. No way! Oh, I got five stars. Wow. Okay. Am I an experienced pilot? Uh, did you enjoy this mission? Sure. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with not sure. One of the most fun things about DRL and its tie-in to real-world racing is the ability to watch the tracks watch the replays of other pilots in the simulator. And yeah, we know that it's not exactly the same as flying in real life, but it's still amazing to see what some of these guys pull off. If you've never seen a really top pilot flying in a simulator, it's kind of inhuman how good they are. Um, it's kind of discouraging. Well, for me it is because I'm not that good. But uh, if you have a lot of potential to be real good, well, maybe this will inspire you. The last thing we got to talk about in the review of any drone racing simulator is how good does it fly? How does it feel? Does it feel super floaty or unrealistic? Or does it feel kind of like flying the real thing? And I will say that no simulator feels perfectly like flying the real thing. Like I tried to fly the uh, multi-gp 2017 regional qualifier track which i actually flew in real life and although i was certainly not a record setter i was able to finish laps without crashing all the time and i really struggled in the simulator some of that is because the quad that's being simulated is very different from the quads that i was flying it's a very high powered racing quad and i mine were not high-powered racing quads. That's just not something I'm, I'm not used to flying 5S 2400 KV. But I think some of it has to be down to something about the simulator. The DRL guys will say that the physics model is very, very close to the real thing. Okay, well, it's something else. It's the latency of the USB interface on the transmitter. It's my graphics card. I don't know. I will say, though, that the DRL simulator is very good among one of the best of, 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 in terms of how realistic it feels. It takes some getting used to. All simulators take a little bit of getting used to and a little bit of tweaking in terms of the rates or maybe the physics in order to get the quad to feel like you expect it to feel. But after a few tracks, I did really easily settle in and start getting faster and working my way up the uh, leaderboards. And I think with you know enough hours of practice, I would get there to the point where it felt very natural. Whereas if you take DRL or liftoff, then I, I feel like they are close enough to the real thing that once you settle into them, they are pretty freaking good. The question then is, which is better, DRL or liftoff? That's tough because they're both pretty good on physics 3.0. I'm not sure without a lot of back and forth, I could really call which of those had like the best physics. I will say that liftoff is basing its physics off of theoretical calculations where they try and get the calculations as close to reality as possible. Whereas uh, DRL has actually done like real world comparisons with the, the quad and the motion capture to try and get actual validation that their physics model is matching reality. So DRL maybe has the grounds to argue that they're better. Hmm. They're both good though. And I think what's really going to make you pick a simulator like DRL versus one, a simulator like maybe Liftoff is the, the quality of the tracks. DRL has really great tracks. Uh, DRL definitely has a way better training mode than the training mode in Liftoff. Um, and I will say the DRL editor is also better than the editor in Liftoff. It's just easier to make a track with less struggle in the DRL editor. And that being said, the Liftoff tracks are very fun, and Liftoff does have a really strong online component. A lot of people are playing Liftoff in multiplayer rooms, uh, and um, I'm, I don't see as much of that. Whenever people are saying, hey, do you want to play in the simulator, it seems like they're, they're usually saying Liftoff or maybe Velocidrone and not so much DRL Sim. The final thing for DRL Simulator is, yeah, if you want to go and be a pro pilot, start practicing now. 
because they just picked the the winner uh, for 2019. And that means you have all year to start getting good and working your way up for the 2020. And who knows, one of you guys out there could be the one to get that $75,000 contract and go and race against pilots like Paul Nurkula, Alex Vanover, Gab707 uh, in past years. Uh, I think Wild Willie is still on it. Uh, Johnny FPV was one of the pilots. You could literally buy this computer program, race it all year, and then go race with those guys if you are really freaking good. And that's something that, well, I was about to say that no other simulator does it, but actually I think DCL, ooh, the DCL also has a simulator and also has a real world league. Oh, well, we'll have to cover that in my next video in this series of videos, which will probably come out that's going to do it for this video. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. What's your favorite simulator? Tell me in the comments. Do you love liftoff? Do you love DRL? Do you love Velocidrone? Do you love ooh, FPV Air? Ooh, or some other simulator out there I'm not familiar with. Tell me what your favorite is and tell me why. What has it got that nobody else has? Uh, and I will think about what simulator I want to review next. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.